Good evening, everyone. Uh, good, good to uh, be able to talk to y'all, even if it's like this, uh, talking to a t uh, computer screen. I told, I think it was Al or somebody that, that just uh, about a week ago. I said, you know what? It's crazy, but I said it's it's harder for me to sit here in this chair talking to this TV screen than if it I was a room full of people with a uh, 150 people in it. But anyway, here we are, and uh, I just want to thank uh, Nikki and the church for giving me the opportunity to share at this time, and especially well, there's so many uncertain things in the world and uh, in our towns, communities, and churches. But uh, before we get, before I get to the words I, I want to share with y'all tonight, I want us to uh, uh, begin our time together with an opening prayer. Uh, just remembering all our homebound, our the, our people that are hospitalized, others others that still mourning loss of loved ones, and all the people and friends who are going through hard decisions medical decisions, treatment decisions, and for all those who feel like life, everyday life is squeezing down and pushing down on them. It's true, we all have felt our weaknesses before and probably will again, but we will pray for all of these for we know our frail weaknesses are Christ's strength. He alone is our rock. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, we thank you for this time. And Lord, uh, I know it's it's a different setting and maybe a different way that uh, like many times before we've had a list of names and Lord, there's usually a bunch of people sitting around and uh, gathered around to uh, share their concerns and voice their names, but Lord, we know you know who they are. Because uh, we communicate with you through through words by voice, but Lord, we communicate, we communicate most, most of our feelings and concerns heart to heart. And Lord, that's how we're coming to you tonight, with hearts, just, uh, going out for these ones that uh lord they they need our prayers they need they need your uh they need your reassurance lord they need your strength and just to be with them and lord that's what we're calling on you tonight for and uh, lord i know we know you're there with those right now and giving them some peace and a time when this world can't can't offer it and there's none in us he can only come through you lord thank you for the day thank you for this time most of all thank you for your son jesus christ it's in his name i pray amen uh i just jotted down a few things here uh and excuse me, some people's better at it than others to just have it by memory, but I'm not one of those. I had I, the way I have to have it written down, or uh, I, I that's just it's just the way I am, but uh, bear with me. Uh, let's see, before I read my words tonight, provided by the Spirit of Christ Jesus, I want to remind all of, all of you these words. These words were for me to hear, along with all who might hear them tonight. Also, my beginning words might sound odd at first, but with the, with the Lord's help, I, they will make sense in the end, I hope. They remind us of how, if not careful, who and what our trust is in. It's subtle, it's natural, but if we're not careful it, careful, it robs us right before our eyes. Uh, 
I, I think I mentioned it somewhere along in these words that this was a these this this what I'm gonna talk about tonight was uh it was part of a Sunday school lesson. And when I when I studied studied for this lesson a week it I mean uh it was one of those where you, it don't leave you. You know, we hate to own up to it, but there's sometimes we may study a lesson and it's with us for a little while. But sadly, it in our natural way, it it doesn't stick around too long. But this one here did, and I think it. I hope it does. I hope y'all hearing it is as much for you to. Uh, Maybe words that you y'all want to hear that it, it meant so much to to me when I when the uh, Lord revealed them to me. I, uh, I think I've shared before. Any time that uh, the Spirit shares words with me, it always gives me a, a title to it, and the title to this. Uh, this these words that I've got written down tonight are the shadow of flesh. Let's get into it. As we sit here this evening, we're 20 days from a national election. People all across this nation from coast to coast, from north to south, from young to old, all will go and cast votes. All the money that's been spent on TV ads Radio, internet, billboards, yard signs, bumper stickers, shirts, hats, buttons, etc. You name it. Come down to this one day approaching, November 3rd. I, for one, will be glad when it's over. And I'm betting I'm not alone. Now, you might have thought by my first couple of lines writing these words, they were going to be political in some way. I can assure you, no way, no how, not a chance, because I know it has no place here. It has a place, but not here. I realize my words might bring criticism, but the truth sometimes does that. That's just the way it is. For years now, I wonder why does it seem like the stakes get raised higher and higher for every election? Why does it seem like we get farther and farther apart? Someone might answer this way. It just, got, it just comes down to ideology. Ours is so much different from the others and theirs just no more middle ground. Now that would be a political answer. And I've heard it a lot and you have too. But remember this, I'm not talking about politics. No. I think it's something much deeper, something that's natural, something that's natural to a sinful nature. See, don't ever forget, we are all of a sinful nature, whether or not we like to own up to it. But it's true if we're honest with ourselves. I do believe it's part of the curse of sin in this world. The sin I'm talking about has nothing to do with con artists, liars, cheats, thieves, drunkards. You know the list. No, the sin I'm talking about is the flesh. And no, it isn't the flesh pertaining to sexual immorality either. Now, if you're wondering why I chose this to write and speak about, I have to come clean. It's from a recent Sunday school lesson from Isaiah that's revealed these words alone with the Spirit of Christ. The more I studied, the more I wondered. The more I thought, is this our problem too? Is this our nation's problem too? If you read Isaiah, especially chapters 1 through 39, they are filled with occasional songs of praise. Praise to the Lord. But they are more filled with prophecies about or against woes about or against especially Israel Ephraim the northern kingdom and Judah the southern kingdom and Jerusalem the capital city 
God's dealing with Israel throughout the Old Testament is well chronicled as attacker and protector. It's a harsh way to say it, but it's true. Isaiah co confronts both the need for God to act against Jerusalem and also the need to deliver them. Before I, before I read our scripture passage tonight, there are three words I want us to all remember. The first being flesh. The second word, protects. And the third, spirit. All three are here. And I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 31, one, verses 1 through 3. Now, I don't... Uh, I don't know if any of y'all are sitting there listening, but if you want to, if you want to open your Bibles up and follow along with me, that'd be good. Now, if you opened your Bible to follow along, your Bible might have a title to chapter 31 reading something like this. Woe to those who rely on Egypt. Now I'm going to read verses 1, one through 3. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots, and in the great strength of their horsemen. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel, or seek help from the, from the Lord. Yet he too is wise, and he can bring disaster. He does not take back his words. He will rise up against the house of the wicked, against those who help evildoers. But the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, he who helps will stumble. He who is helped will fall. Both will perish together. First off, this isn't about God being ticked off because Judah has bought a bunch of horses and chariots from Egypt. No, it's far worse than that. Judah's problem is its focus. Judah's problem is its focus to political policy in Jerusalem and seeking support and alliance with Egypt. Judah's alliance is with God, not Egypt. Judah's deliverance and strength lie in doing nothing on its own, but it's hard to make politicians live by that principle in the ancient world and, yes, the present world. What makes through the ages the lure of power, security, economic pros prosperity, military greatness enticing to man? Not once ever thinking twice to weigh the repercussions that might await for oneself, one's nation, but more importantly, for God. Now I want you to go back and substitute where you heard and saw the word Egypt or Egyptians with the words flesh of men. That's right, the sin of flesh. The sin of relying on men for all our needs instead of God. See, this was Judah's sin. Could it be ours? I'm not preaching, I'm asking. If we're honest, do we not seek after these two? Some of you might say, Wendell, these things are necessary for a nation. It's also important to have politicians and powerful people in charge of all these things. I might answer this way. There might have to be a place for it, but it can't be the place, right? Throughout my life, and I'm guessing some of yours too, when I find myself under that curse of you know, the seeking flesh curse. I always find myself reading Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. I'm going to read them now. Matthew 
Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow, they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That passage of scripture, it always gives me, it gives a calming to my soul and spirit, and I'll bet yours also. It always puts me in the place. Now to the second word, protects. Now I'm going to read, go back into Isaiah chapter 31, verses 4 through 5. Bear with me. This is verse 4 through 5. This is what the Lord says to me. As a lion growls and a great lion over his prey, and though a whole band of shepherds is called together against him, he is not frightened by their shouts or disturbed by their clamor. So the Lord Almighty will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and on its heights. Like birds hovering overhead, the Lord, the Lord Almighty will shield Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and will rescue it. The attacker becomes the protector. The protector is described by Isaiah in vivid imagery of a growling lion in defensive posture over what is his. Unafraid of approaching strangers to run away or leave, he won't back down. The protector is also portrayed as an eagle circling above its nest and over its young, spreading its wing in defense of its young. These descriptions of God's protection using a majestic and strong line along with an eagle wind under its wings should give us assurance as I'm sure it did for Judah many years ago. The rest of chapter 31, verses 6 through 9 of Isaiah, of Isaiah deals with Judah abandoning their idols and the destruction of the Assyrian army. The angel of the Lord struck down 185,000 soldiers. Yes, God protects them. This is the end of chapter 31. And no, I haven't forgotten the third word, spirit. When I studied, when I studied Isaiah chapter 31, I found myself including chapter 32. See, they have, they have to be, they have to go together. The, it, it would be, it would be a disservice not to, to, include chapter 32 along with chapter 31. I found myself including chapter 32, especially verses 1 through 4. But, for, but before I read them, I want to ask you this. Do you believe there's another trait we share today and have in common with Judah? 
Judah and others were called obstinate, an obstinate nation. Or if you like me, I prefer maybe uh, an, another another way, another term. It's called hard-headed. That's my Oshkosh interpretation. Sadly, I don't believe it ended in Isaiah's time. It still exists today, doesn't it? It's part of our sin curse too, right? Here's chapter 32 of Isaiah, verses 1 through 4. See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. Each man will be like a shelter from the wind, and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert, and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed. And the ears of those who hear will listen. The mind of the rash will know and understand. And the stammering tongue will be fluid and clear. When I read these verses of Scripture in Isaiah, I hear the coming protection. God's everlasting protection. And I hear personalized protection. One-on-one -on -one protection. Not nation protection or people's protection. No, each man protection. Each, pers each person, each person alone will seek protection in the King of Righteousness, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. All shelter, all refuge lies within. Even shelter from death. Each man will come to the line, the line of Judah. Roles are reversed. Eyes will see, ears will hear for all who come. God protected and God protects. For now the world can't take away the protection that lies within us. We become spirit filled the way God our Father created it to be. A created body, a vessel to be filled with His Spirit. It's through His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, He fills us and is filling us. All protections we need are met. There's no need to chase after flesh, seeking protection that we already have and are assured of and are promised. Lastly, for myself and for all who can hear or see me now. In the days to come, we have a choice. Not between political candidates, but the choice to choose between relying on the flesh or relying on Christ Jesus. One is hard and burdened. One is easy and light. One brings worry. One brings hope. One relies on maybes. One assures promises. Remember this. When the shadow of Egypt's pyramids cast down on everything man has put trust in in this world, Listen to Christ's words from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. That's protection. That's everything. All rolled up into just a few short words. Before we close and have a prayer, 
the uh, the spirit urged me to ask a few more questions. Questions that I've asked. I wouldn't ask anyone any questions that, that it has, hasn't already asked me. Here they are. Spirit of Christ urged me to ask this. We can't have it both ways, can we? We can't rely on flesh and trust flesh along with God swapping in and out. It has to be God first, always, in everything without exception. Otherwise, it's not really trust, is it? To Christ, all glory. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for... Uh, Lord, thank you for everything we are. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this, this breath we're breathing right now. Lord, uh, Lord, it is so easy for the, for the flesh of this life to draw us and entice us. thinking somehow or another that it matters. But in the end, Lord, it really doesn't. You've told us over and over, but yet mm, we have a hard time taking hold of it. Lord, I just, I just thank you for, uh, Lord, for forgiving us when we stumble and and we do go to chasing out, out, off after something that it'll always just bring us back to you broken. Lord, uh, be with us the rest of this night. And Lord, the rest of this week and in the days to come. And Lord, let us if anything, let us keep that in our mind about that old shadow casting down on all that's man-made and flesh-made. And Lord, let us let us think more about your voice, and we know we know your voice. That's good. That's all we need in this world. Lord is. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.